Okay, today's lesson is on measuring segments and angles, and this is from section 1.4 in our text. We're going to learn to find the lengths of segments and as well as the measures of angles, and we're going to do this algebraically in this section. So let's first talk about the ruler postulate. The ruler postulate says the points of a line can be put in one-to-one -one correspondence with the real numbers. Let's determine what that means. That means really that the um, points on a line are lined up with the real number line. Okay, And what that means is the distance between any two points on our number line is going to be the absolute value of the difference of those values. So if we have some segment AB, the length of segment AB is going to be the absolute value of its value at little a and little b. So let's say little a is negative 3 and little b is positive 5. Then ab is going to be the absolute value of negative 3 minus 5, which is negative 8. Absolute value, negative 8, which is positive 8. And this makes sense, really, because 0 is here between them. And the distance between negative 3 and 0 is 3, and the distance between 0 and 5 is 5, so that gives you a total of distance of 8. Now let's talk about congruent segments. Congruent segments are two segments that are the same length. In other words, if uh, segment AB is congruent to segment CD, they're written like this. So let's say this is segment AB and this is segment CD and they're both three centimeters. Then segment AB and segment CD are said to be congruent. And this notation of putting lines, um, little slash marks here, that uh, have the same number of slashes for A, B, and C, D help us realize when we're noting a document or a drawing that these two segments are in fact um, congruent. Okay, And we will write them when the length of A, B matches the length of C, D. We write it as A, B is congruent to C, D. So now let's compare some segment lengths. Okay, So let's say we have a is at negative 7, B is, and that's this point right here, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, negative 1. C is at 2. And D is way over here, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay? We want to find the measure of AB, and we want to also find the measure of BD. Okay? So the measure of segment AB is going to be the absolute value of negative 7 minus a negative 1, and that's going to be the absolute value of negative 7 plus 1 which is the absolute value of negative 6, right? Which is positive 6. Now BD is a little bit different, so we're going to have the absolute value of negative 1 minus 11. Well, negative 1 minus 11 is just negative 12. Its absolute value is positive 12. So AB has a length of 6, right? And BD has a length of 12. Okay? Now, are AB and BD congruent? No, they're not. Okay? Let's look at postulate 1 6. Postulate 1 6 says if three points, A, B, and C, are collinear, and B is between points A and C on that line, then the 
length of segment AB plus the length of segment BC is equal to the length of segment AC. And here's what this looks like. If we have a line, and we've got A and B and C on it, then this segment length of AB plus the segment length of BC is equal to the segment length of AC. And that really kind of makes sense. okay? But it's a really handy postulate, and I'll show you how we use it more on the next slide. So let's look at this. We've got this segment here. We've got segment A, B, and C. And let's say that um, segment AC is equal to 20, 20 units. Okay. Well, we know that AB plus BC is going to equal that total length of AC. We know that AB is equal to 2x minus 5. We know that BC is equal to 3x plus 7. And we know that AC is equal to 20. So we can set this up as an algebraic equation so that 2x minus 5 plus 3x plus 7 is equal to 20. And that means that 5x plus 2, combining like terms, remember, is equal to 20. We can subtract 2. That leaves me with 5x equal to 18. And then if we divide by 5, we find that x is equal to 18 fifths. Okay, That's something we would have never been able to guess. Yay algebra. Yay math. We need to also check our work too, right? So if we have 2 times 18 fifths minus 5, right? Plus 3 times 18 fifths plus 7. We should get 20 for that. Okay? So 2 times 18 is 36. So 36 fifths. I'm going to turn this into negative 5 and positive 7 or positive 2, which is 10 fifths. Then 18 times 3 is 54 plus 54 fifths, okay? So now we have 36 plus 10 plus 54, okay? And so that is 100. So that is equal to 100 fifths, which is equal to 20. So our check work is good, so we're happy with this result. Nasty fractions, but fractions happen sometimes. Okay, now let's talk about some angles. Now an angle is formed by rays having the same end point. And so if we have ray BA and ray BC, and they have the same end point B, okay, but they're not opposite rays, then we have an angle that forms, okay? And this angle can be um, many different types of angles, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So let's talk about how to name this angle. With angles, the vertex of the angle is always going to be the middle part, and then we need three points to show the angle. So this could be angle ABC, but it could also be angle CBA. Okay, we could also just call it angle one. Okay, so you could have um, several different names or styles of names that you might see in um, looking at angles, and it, a lot of times it just depends on how much space is available to show things without getting confusing. Now let's talk about the protractor postulate. Now, 
We're going to let OA and OB be opposite rays in a plane. Oops. And I am going to make this a little smaller so that you can see what I do here. So O is going to be this point here. And A is going to be this point over here. And B is going to be this point over here. We're going to assume that these rays extend out towards infinity, okay? So they're opposite rays in a plane. And all the rays with endpoint O that can be drawn on one side of AB are going to be paired with the numbers from 0 to 180, okay? And this is to divide this arc into 180 degrees because it is a semicircle, okay? Okay, then the measure of the distance from any angle C, well, that's a very poor angle. Let me draw it a little bit better. Any angle C Okay, so if we're talking measure COA or COB, okay, those form different angles as well. So OA gets paired with 0, OB gets paired with 180, and you can see 0 over here and 180 is over here. Okay, if OC is paired with x, some angle x, and OD is paired with angle y, then the measure of angle COD is the absolute value of x minus y. So the measure of angle COD is equal to the absolute value of x, which was 65 minus y. Now keep in mind you've got two scales here. Always use the same scale. This was 65 over here, so I want to use this scale over here, which was 120. Okay? So, this is going to be equal to the absolute value of negative 55 degrees, which ends up being positive 55 degrees. Okay? So this angle here, COD, let me point that out to you, angle COD is going to be equal to 55 degrees. And you can tell that because if you measure 10, 20, 30, 40, 55 degrees, you can see that that plays, that that algebra, that little bit of formula work, plays out with measuring it. And really, this is not so much something that you need to be able to do with math, you just need to know how to work with a protractor. So let's talk about the types of angles. We have acute angles. Acute angles are less than 90 degrees. Then we have right angles, right, which are equal to 90 degrees. Obtuse angles are angles that are between 0 and 90 degrees. Sorry, between 90 and 180 degrees. And then straight angles are equal to 180 degrees. Okay? And you probably already knew that. Let's talk about another postulate. This is called the angle addition postulate. And the angle addition postulate is kind of like the segment addition postulate. It says that if we have got A, O, B, and C, we've got the measure of angle AOC, okay? And AOC is this outer angle here. Then the measure of angle A and B is some point in the interior, and we've got a ray that goes from O to B. Then the measure of angle AOB plus the measure of angle BOC is equal to the measure of angle AOB. Now, if AOC is a straight angle, then AOB plus BOC would equal 180 degrees. Okay? 
So this is what this looks like. If you have A here, O, and then C, and then B somewhere in the middle, and we've got a straight angle, then they're both going to add up to 180 degrees. And these are what we call supplementary angles, and you've probably heard that before. So now let's use this angle addition postulate. So I don't include any diagrams here, so we have an ABC and an ABD going on here. So we've got an ABC, right? ABC. And we know that that is 30 degrees. And then an ABD, this whole measure here is 120 degrees. And we want to know what is the measure of angle B. Uh, sorry, CBD, I should have said. C, B, D. Notice that we have to have this middle letter the same because that's the vertex. So C, B, D is what we want to know. We know 30 and we know 120. Now we want to know the measure of this angle here. Well, the angle addition postulate says that 30 plus the measure of angle C, B, D should equal 120 degrees. And simple subtraction reveals that the measure of that angle CBD is 90 degrees. So you can see that your diagrams might always not might not always match up with um, what your angles show up to be. So, but again, they're just diagrams. So with geometry, keep in mind you can't really rely on a diagram to tell you anything. You need to verify it with the actual math. Okay, so we'll do a lot more uh, practice with this in class. Oh, one other thing we need to know is congruent angles. Congruent angles have the same measure. So, let's look at this. Congruent angles. Have the same measure. And so we might say the measure of angle 1 is congruent to the measure of angle 2. Okay? We could also say angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Both of these things mean the same thing. Okay? So you might see it written either way, and either way is fine. Okay, we'll see you in class.